progresses, you'll notice that there's a change in the sky's heat. Farther back, we all started in water. The cyanotype, it probably wouldn't be accurate to call it kind of color photography. I'm visually drawn to this, what is a better reason other than like, oh, it looks cool. In the dim dusk, just on the precipice of night, tolls a bell, a toxin that marks the death of an hour and the birth of a new one, one that's blue. But aren't most the hours blue? Even so, each hour of blue has its own hue. Sometimes, though, the hour is golden, But that brief time is only a punctuation to Blue's otherwise omnipresence. I've got my moon, and we're gonna see how that one turns out. Yeah, always love the moon. Mm -hmm. Universally loved the exactly. moon. Because after, it's there again. A blue trail that beckons after the day is done, but before the night has begun. Yeah, it's pretty much up to you. It's a blue that begins to more vividly depict in the late afternoons of the early summer. During that time, twilight is a long, languid thing to luxuriate in. The day's protracted swan song is a beacon of brighter, bluer skies for tomorrow. But then, as we meet an inflection point, surpassing the solstice, this shade of blue paints a different meaning. A meaning that never truly left, having been more just papered over by colorful interpretations. Indeed, as twilight attenuates, beginning to contain within the hour, the ghostly, eerie quality of its blue now realizes its enduring dread. Dusk had always been a sign that night was about to close in. Now it's a sign that, in due time, it intends to stay. social oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, unless you're just out there filming nature or something. <laughs> so it's like, I guess, this is kind of, and stuff like this, like interviewing people, it's kind of like a form of exposure therapy a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I mean, if that's the way of putting it. My name is Sarah Schaefer. I'm Dr. Lenz. My name is Herbert DeLeo. I am Allison Kelto. I specialize in photography, and then more specifically um, with historical photographic processes, namely the cyanotype. If you have like a glass of water, it is clear. It's in a way a little bit. The light comes through it, it's bent a little. If you stick a straw in it, you'll see some diffraction. The refractivity of water enables another visually interesting phenomenon. You're looking at Cherenkov radiation, which is emitted from nuclear reactors submerged in water. And since light reaches us 25% slower when it travels through water, some matter, when accelerated by a nuclear reactor, 
can outpace light in this context. When this happens, what we witness is a photonic boom. It's a monster. There is what we might dub kind of tentatively color photography from the beginning of, of photography's existence, but in those cases it's usually hand colored. So when light is emitted from a source, uh, let's say the sun, it's emitting everything from UV rays to infrared waves. Uh, you detect that as heat on your skin. What we call visible light is a very narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We can't see them, but we can set up photographic materials that allow us to image them and make them visible to us. I've seen these things called like anthotypes yeah, online. Those, those cool they're like red, right? Sometimes if a spice is kind of heavily pigmented or dye based, like mm -hmm. uh, turmeric, it essentially like, stains the paper. I think probably the one in the middle, that red, that one looks probably the best, but... That's not bad here. You think? Find I. Or here, there has to do a lot detail. Look at there in the middle. Which one? This. Yeah, but it doesn't look... <laughs> well, we tried. But it's whatever. Things rarely go as you expect them to. Am I ever gonna get this to fucking work? The possibility of disappointment exists behind every decision. Oh, I guess that's done. If you were to look through my eyes and see what I see, it would not be what you would expect. Your impossible expectations begin to reduce everything to a single shade. Color is incredibly, actually, completely subjective. Blue was historically, it was a kind of thing that you would reserve for the things that were most important. As the blue nights draw to a close, and they will, and they do, you experience an actual chill, an apprehension of illness, at the moment you first notice. The blue light is going. The days are already shortening. The summer is gone. I enjoyed it. Awesome. This was fun. Yeah. Cool. Things rarely go as you expect them to. And that's a good thing. You can never know where a day will take you or where an idea will send you sojourning. All you can do is try to make peace with what you eventually decided to do. Find an interesting pattern in the noise, then follow that thread until the end. In the dim dawn, just on the precipice of day, it's still save for the waves, which shift as they do, senselessly, a system inexorably increasing in entropy, just as all else, chaotically undulating through space and time, without interest in whatever hour it happens to be. Occasionally, an insight or two will chart its way through the waters, 
like the technical limitations kind of define uh, like the art. Burying through the foamy chatter. So when you say it's a particle that has a frequency, what does that sort of mean? Does that mean that the particle? Our minds is always work entirely based on shorthand and based on kind of prior experience. Then, just as inexplicably as it came, it is lost, fleeing your horizon. You wait, elegiac, for something new to distract. Slowly and somnolently, the sun wakens the horizon. Like clueless acolytes, we're stupefied by the sight, the shackles of pensive thought that tie us to our purpose in concomitant angst, ionized and forgotten, our mind addled by our very own eyes, those things we so rely on, if only to filter away the intrinsic inanity of the natural world. In the next moment, the magic is lost. In daylight, with nowhere to hide, it's simply too bright. In no uncertain terms, the sun and its countless messengers stridently flash this fact into view. You have stuff to do.